Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the number theoretic function which can be used to find the number of primes less than or equal to a given number. Also we will discuss the famous prime number theorem. Suppose x is a positive real number then pi of x denotes the number of primes less than or equal to x. Pi of x denotes the number of primes less than or equal to x. For example, pi of 10 is equal to 4 because we have the primes less than or equal to 10 are 2, 3, 5, 7. So there are 4 primes less than or equal to 10. So uh, pi of 10 is equal to 4. Pi of 28.75 equal to 9. That is, there are 9 primes which is less than or equal to 28.75 and pi of 100 is equal to 25. There are 25 primes which is less than or equal to 100. We already discussed this uh, in the previous uh, lecture uh, by using that algorithm. Okay. Now using the summation notation, uh, we can express or we can define this function pi of x as pi of x is equal to summation p less than or equal to x 1 where p denotes a prime. Okay, that is pi of x is equal to summation uh, over the all primes less than or equal to x 1. That is for example, if you are taking x equal to 10, then we have uh, these are the primes less than or equal to 10. So this is first p, this is the second p, this is third p and this is fourth p. So for each p, we have to add 1 here. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 4. So we will get pi of x equal to 4. So this is the definition by summation notation. Now we can uh, discuss um, a formula for finding the uh, value of pi of x or for, for finding the uh, number of primes less than or equal to x. Theorem 2.10. Let p1, p2, etc. pt be primes less than or equal to square root of n. Then pi of n is equal to that is number of primes less than or equal to n is equal to n minus 1 plus pi of root n. So we are finding the, uh, we, we, we are uh, finding, first finding, evaluating the uh, now root, uh, primes less than or equal to root n. So uh, pi of n will be n minus 1 plus pi of root or root n minus summation i floor of n by pi plus summation i less than j n by floor of n by pi pj minus summation i less than i j less than k floor of n by pi pj pk etc plus minus 1 power t uh, floor of n by p1 p2 etc pt okay so uh, the proof of this theorem is uh, complicated so we can omit that now we can illustrate this uh, theorem by an example using this theorem 2.10 find the number of primes less than or equal to 100 that is we have to find pi of 100 okay we already know that pi of 100 is equal to 25 so we have to prove this by using this formula. Here n is equal to 100. So we have root n is equal to root 100 that is 10. So we have here we need to replace pi of root n here. So pi of root n is equal to pi of root 10 root 100 that is pi of 10 which is equal to 4. Okay. So we know there are uh, 4 primes less than or equal to 10 which are 2, 3, 5 and 7. Okay, we can number, we can uh, name this as P1, P2, P3, and P4. So here we have uh, um, a pi of n is equal to this formula. That is, we here here we have four primes. Okay, in this case, so by we have this is our formula. So here we have uh, applying this formula, we get pi of 100 is equal to n minus one. That is 100 minus one plus pi of root n. That is pi of uh, root uh, pi of 10. That is four. This is pi of root 10, 4, minus summation i from uh, summation i n by pi i, floor of n by pi i. Here pi i are uh, 2, 3, 5, 7. So first one is uh, 100 by 2, floor of 100 by 2. Then second one is 100 by 3. Third one is 100 by 5. Uh, fourth one is actually here we will get this. This is nothing but n by p1 plus n by p2 plus n by p3 plus n by p4 here we have uh, four primes now that is n by p1 is this n by p2 n by p3 n by p4 now here uh, in this case n by pi pj for i less than j 
so here we have 2 less than 3 less than 5 and less than 6 so uh, we have 100 by uh, 2 into 3 then 100 by 2 into 5 floor of 100 by 2 into 7 then uh, it is over then we have we, we have to start with 3 so 3 into 5 3 into 7 that is 100 by 3 into 5 3 into 7 uh, then 5 into 7 100 by 5 into 7 that is uh, taking two primes at a time okay now we have to take three primes at a time so for that we have first one is 2 3 5 100 divided by 2 3 5 then 2 3 7 2 3 7 then 2 5 7 okay then we have to start with the 3 3 5 7 so over. now we have uh, we have to use all these primes that is 100 divided by 2 3 5 7 okay so this will be the uh, number of primes less than or equal to 100 so now we have to find these uh, floors so we have uh, this is 100 minus 1 plus 4 that is 100 plus 3 that is 103 100 by 2 is 50 so floor of 50 is 50 then 100 by 3 is 33 uh, point something so uh, floor of that is 33 100 by 5 is 20 floor of 20 is 20 itself then 100 by 7 uh, it is floor of uh, 14 uh, 14 plus something that is 14 then 100 by 6 here 100 by 6 that is we will get 16 then floor of uh, 100 by 2 into 5 that is uh, floor of 100 by 10 that is 10 that is floor of 10 is 10 100 by 14 which is uh, 7 100 by uh, third, uh, 3 into 5 floor of 100 by uh, 15 that is 6 floor of 100 by 21 that is 4 uh, floor of 100 by 35 that is 2 that is uh, it is it will be uh, 2 point something okay and 100 by 5.7 is 2 point something so the floor will be 2 now here 100 divided by uh, 2 into 3 into 5 that is 100 divided by 30 that is 3 into something uh, 3 point something that is floor will be 3 2 into 3 into 7 uh, uh, that is 100 by 42 that is uh, 2 2 point something will be there then floor of this uh, 100 divided by 2 into 5 into 7 that is 70 100 by 7 is 1 so 1 point something will be here though so floor will be 1 100 by 3 into 5 into 7 so it is 0 actually because 3 into 5 into 7 is equal to uh, is greater than 0 uh, greater than 100 so 0 point something will be there so floor will be 0 and adding this we will get uh, 25 so we will get pi of 100 is equal to 25 that is uh, number of primes less than or equal to 100 is 25 the above formula is actually not useful or not practical when n is fairly large if n is large it is not practical using this formula but uh, if, if n is large then we can use the prime number theorem uh, that we, we are going to discuss now uh, prime number theorem is the result in number theory uh, it, it is become useful uh, if n is large actually uh, by using that prime number theorem we cannot find the number of uh, primes less than or equal to x but uh, we can find an approximate value of pi of n. by using this uh, prime number theorem we can find an approximate value of pi of n that is we cannot we can find an approximate number of primes less than or equal to n or x okay that is what is the prime number theorem the prime number theorem states that a limit extends to infinity pi of x divided by x by ln x is equal to 1 limit extends to infinity pi of x divided by x by ln x equal to 1 that is as x gets larger and larger pi of x approaches to x by ln x that is x uh, infinitely approach in the answer is uh, this by this is equal to 1 means this is equal to pi of x approaches to x by ln x as x approaches to infinity as x approaches to infinity pi of x tends to x by ln x that is this uh, prime number theorem so we will get an approximate value of pi of x as x is approaches to infinity the proof of this theorem is also not included in your syllabus so we can uh, move on to the next theorem theorem 2.12 for every positive integer n there are n consecutive integers that are composite numbers that is prime positive integer n we can find uh, n consecutive composite in numbers 
the proof is an existence proof here so we have to provide n such composite numbers suppose n is a positive integer now consider n consecutive integers n plus 1 factorial plus 2 n plus 1 factorial plus 3 n plus 1 factorial plus 4 etc n plus 1 factorial plus n plus 1 where n is greater than or equal to 1 that is we uh, taken n consecutive integers this is first one this is second one so this is nth one so we are taken n consecutive integers now we are going to prove that these integers are composite numbers now suppose 2 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n plus 1 that is k n is 2 mudal n plus 1 where you have an integer and the procedure so we have k divides n plus 1 factorial because n plus 1 factorial is equal to n plus 1 into uh, n n minus 1 etc 3 2 1 this is n, n plus 1 factorial since k is an integer between 2 and n plus 1 it will be any one of this this factors so uh, k should divide n plus 1 factorial so k divides n plus 1 factorial so k divides n plus 1 factorial plus k because k divides uh, k and k divides n plus 1 factorial so this is by theorem 2.4 we know a divides b a divides c implies a divides b plus c this is by theorem 2.4 so uh, k divides n plus 1 factorial and k divides k therefore k divides n plus 1 factorial plus k that is true for every k between 2 and n plus 1 including 2 and n plus 1 therefore each of them is a composite number because for each of these numbers uh, we have at least uh, one integer between 2 and n plus 1 that uh, that, that that divides this uh, such number so that will be a composite number okay prime on angle or number prime on an angle prime in the devices say they will do one num up you mother will do okay then the ideal devices in the world and ideal devices and angle it will be a composite number we would have a number your number consider c and angle n plus one factorial plus two and the number can consider c and angle we can choose two as k therefore uh, two divides n plus one factorial and two divides two therefore two divides n plus one factorial plus two so n plus one factorial plus two is a composite number similarly we can choose k equal to three for the second number and uh, k equal to four for the third number etc so e numbers alone there you composite numbers are you mother like the consecutive numbers and you know don't add any other term on that any other term etc so these are n consecutive numbers which are uh, composite number so for any positive integer n uh, there are n consecutive integers that are composite numbers thus uh, n consecutive integers are this this is the required composite consecutive integers so for example if you are taking 2 n equal to 2 so we can find two composite number consecutive composite numbers one first one is 2 plus 1 factorial plus 2 that is 2 plus 1 factorial is 3 factorial that is 6 plus 2 this is one number then 6 plus 3 is another number okay that is 8 9 these are two composite numbers okay n3 would go angle moon consecutive composite numbers gonna number two n3 or the real 3 plus 1 factorial that is 4 factorial plus 2 4 factorial plus 3 4 factorial plus 4 the three composite numbers number two number two that is 4 factorial is 24 plus 2 is 26, 27, 28. This is moon composite numbers I give. Now another example, find 6 consecutive integers that are composites. Okay, so we can use this theorem. That is we have to apply or we have to replace n equal to 6 only here. So uh, the first number will be n plus 1 factorial plus 2. That is we have to find 6 consecutive numbers. So we have to use n equal to 6 here so 6 plus 1 factorial plus 2 that is 7 factorial plus 2 that is 5042 is the first number so uh, the remaining numbers are 5043 5044 5045 5046 and 5047 so all these are uh, six composite six consecutive composite numbers now we have a note according to this theorem 2.12 we can always find arbitrarily long chains of consecutive integers that are composite 
can arbitrarily we can always find a consecutive integers uh, consecutive composite numbers which are arbitrarily long 